Hi everybody, this is Donna Lay of DonnaLay.com and I'm going to show you today how to work with a nine card Lenormand spread. This is a very common spread for people who work with so Lenormand. So it's a very useful one to have in your back pocket. It's bigger than a three card spread, smaller than the Grand Tableau, and it gives you lots of information. So today I'll be using the French Cardomancy deck. I did take the borders off if it looks a little funny to you. I did add glitter to it. I like to modify decks. And if you like how that looks, I have videos that explain how you can do that at home. So basically, Lenormand um, is very different from tarot. And it's not read quite with such a free flow as tarot does with the imagery. Um, when I put the spread down, each spread position doesn't have a meaning. But the central card is important. So if you're doing, for example, a reading about a man, you can deliberately take out the man and then shuffle the rest of the deck and put the cards around it to see what it tells us about the man. Likewise, there are other cards, like if you're making a decision about something here or there, this town or that town, whatever, you might want to use the crossroads. If you're looking for fame, success, you can use the moon. There's the woman card if it's a woman quarant. If you're looking for love or romance, you can choose that as a central card. Um, if you're looking about health, you can put the tree in the middle. Uh, if you're looking to zip up your sex life, there's the lilies for you. So um, there's a couple other things. Let me see, if you're looking to travel, there you can look uh, there. If you're looking for marriage, will he or won't he? There you go. Information about your boss. Will I move or won't I move? Storks are about migration and movement. Will I make the money? How do I make the money? What's going on with the money? Will I write the book? How can I get the book out? There's your book card. Information about a friend. Something about my child. And that's about it. So let's talk about uh, what to do. You can either choose that central card deliberately by seeking it in the deck, or if you'd like, you can do it randomly. And I'm for fun, just gonna do random and see what comes up here for us today. And that central card is the most important one. So here we go, this is our central card. Oh, it's about somebody writing a book, or it could have to do with secrets or something, but we'll call this who about it. someone who wants to be an author. The way I put the nine cards down, I start with the center card, then I do the corner cards. There we go. And then I fill it in one, two, three, four. I put them all upright. I do not read reversals in Lenormand. Well, I always do in tarot. Now, when we look at this spread here, um, what we do is everything's going to radiate at first out from the central card. And Lenormand is read in pairs, not in singles. So we don't say, the book will bring you money, or the book will move, or um, uh, the book will, you'll send out emails or, or do some writing. Um, what you want to do is take pairs of information. So you, if you wanted to, you could do that, but it's not going to give you a lot of information. Here's what you do. Take the ones on both sides of it. Now some people will divide this up into past, present, future from left to right. This could be the bottom row, which is what lies underneath or the basis for it. This is kind of what's going on in your mind. This is the physical world, what's happening. You can do that. Um, you could have no meanings for these, which often I do. But I often, what I'll do is I'll read it first without the meanings, and then I'll add those on at the end, and you'll get more nuances. So let's try this. Let's take a look at first at the corner cards. Let's start with the top two. So we have fish and rider. And that means the money's moving, money movement, the money's going. This I read the card as this is the, the context or the noun, and this is the modifier. So this tells us about the money. So the money is doing what? It's moving. It's kind of like noun and verb. And then you look at these two. Uh, shining a light on it, it's joyful, it's wonderful. This is like a big lucky card. And this is clover which is like a little lucky card. So between sun and clover, you've got both big luck and little luck. And down here, we've got stork and we've got scythe. Now this is interesting and this may be harder to interpret because this is movement and this is not. 
So this is like something stopping the movement. It's not getting out as much as it should. So it's almost like the, the last card down. This is an important one for me because it's kind of like the, the period at the end of the sentence. What's stopping and why? So this also, you can read opposite corners. You're mirroring here. And this means money may, uh, there may, someone may get a cut or you may not get a lot of money or the money is cut somehow. Movement and movement, this is so something is really going to move fast. Because this is success, it's almost like I see this as moving really fast. Um, reading these two here, it's almost like uh, this is not a contract, that would be ring. So this is more to do with messages or cut. Um, getting out there is cut. This is also getting out there. And since this is up here, we can mirror it with this and say, um, whatever is getting out there has been cut. So it is almost like um, where letters are mailed, the book might not be getting out there as much as it should. So getting it out there might be cut. This might be cut. However, the money for it may be good. Maybe this person is doing uh, self-publishing, so they don't need to sell as many copies in order to get it out there and still they'll, they'll make some money. Um, the movement is lucky, so these two together. Uh, this two, movement is lucky, this is big lucky, this is little lucky, so it's good all around. And here we have the cross obstacles. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Now it may mean that this book is about something esoteric or spiritual, but it also could mean um, burdens, something burdensome. Now because um, there's so many good cards here, I, the, my tendency is intuitively want to say is the money has to do, the money part of it may be burdensome, and moving may be burdensome, and the money part being cut agrees here, so it may not be a huge financial uh, endeavor, but it looks like whatever the book is, it's good, and it, it may be well received by those who actually do read it. So you've got these two right here. Part of the burden is getting it out there. So this person may need some serious marketing because it looks like everything is good here in the middle, but they're just not getting the marketing. Um, you're, we've done the corners. You can put the four corners together if you want. The movement of money, uh, it's something like it's moved somewhere and it's been cut. So it's almost like even if you self-publish, whoever you published with would get a good chunk of change and it would impact your income. So we've done a lot with those. Some people will knight a so card. Knighting is something that's done in chest where you would say if this is the position you're, you're peg is in, this is your knight token, You'd, in order for this to move, you can't just move one space. The knights go two forward and then one to the left or the right, or boom, boom, and one down. So it's two spaces and one to the side. So if we were to knight this, we'd go boom, boom, and then it's here. Movement of marketing, movement of, of letters. If we're going to knight it this way, boom, 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 movement of the sun. And what I'm seeing here is that almost seems like advice. So when I look at the movement, like what would help if I were to go one and then two over, it's like uh, exposure, putting the light out, let it be seen, let its goodness be seen. Let's try this, boom, boom, boom. Movement would be somehow get the information out there, messages, you've got to put it out there. There's got to be some kind of written documentation that shows people it's there. Okay, and this leads here too, uh, there. So that's about all we can do. If I want to know about, okay, tell me about the money. Advise me what's going to happen here. One, two, three, same thing. We got to get it out there. Money, boom, boom, boom. This would bring you a little luck. So the little luck suggests that it may bring some more income, but not tons and tons. Although this would show that it would move. Although the money part of it, even though it's moving, it would give you some luck, but it wouldn't be like wealth. Okay, so um, if you really want to explore, you can do those sorts now of things. Now let's take a look at the uh, levels here. So if this is kind of like the basis of what's going on, it's about moving, the marketing is cut or not happening, it's just like stopped. Um, so this is like the basis of, of the situation for here would be a problem. 
what's really happening in the physical world. You've got a great book, Big Luck, Little Luck. It's like it's got a, it wants to get out there. It's good stuff, but it just can't reach its audience. And at the top, if we look at uh, kind of the intellectual side of it, it's like, well, the money may be burdensome, um, but it, it can, it, movement would get there. The burden is because why movement? Money is a burden, why? The burden is because of movement. So, and then we can also look left to right. So you may ask the querent, okay, money is something you're shining a, a, a light and you wanna, um, move it out there, right? So shine the light and moving it out there are two things about the book. Money is something um, to glow. So this may be their past situation is working on this money thing. The now is, whoa, you get the burden of the book and getting it out there. So this client, I would venture to say, is at the point where they've written the book, but how do they get it out there? How are they gonna actually physically get that movement? And you can tell there is a lot of movement in the spread. This is a card about getting it going. And in the future, we have the movement, the luck, and then boom, it gets cut here too. So it's lucky you get a little movement. They do something that gets it out there, but not as much as it probably potentially could someday. So um, that is a, a kind of telling us what's going on with this person. Another thing, you can read it in diagonals. So money, about the book, it's cut. All right, movement about the book. Yeah, it's it's moving, we're getting it out there, but that's because this ended in this, not happening. But it, movement seems to be, these two cards surround the book, seems like that's like what it's all about. If I were to choose other two things, it's also the money is not gonna be as good as it should be. So the book moves, money's not great. Okay, so that's about all I can think of for doing for this particular spread at the moment. But now you've got, okay, you've got a problem. What is this person going to do? Uh, how are they gonna solve this? So, okay, we know it's not getting out there. If you wanna give your client some advice, let's do this. We're gonna shuffle up all our cards and I'm just gonna give them a good swish on the table and I'm gonna stick that book card somewhere in there. This ensures that the cards don't stay side by side as you move them. Pull them back together. And if you'd like, what you can do is continue to shuffle them however you like to shuffle, once or twice. I like to, I don't know why. It always feels good when I just kind of put them like that. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. How do we get it out there? So you can choose the card you wanna use. You can use the movement card uh, because we know that's what we want. You can choose the book. I'm gonna look for, say, migration. How do I get it out there? Another thing you could use is garden. How do I get it for more people? And actually, let's do that. Let's look for the garden card. So I'm gonna go through the entire deck looking for garden. There we are. I'm gonna take two or three cards this is the garden, one, two, three to the right. Some people only use two, but remember they're always red in pairs, so you never take just one. And here we go. So we've got the garden in the middle. One, two, three. Move it in just so I can get it in the camera. And then these are in order as well. So whoop, boom, boom, boom. And I took a little extra one. I'm gonna put it aside. Okay, so the cards we have here are tree, tower, not the same as the tower and tarot, cross, then we've got our garden, birds, dog, and mouse. So this is telling us what's, what's the advice or what's wrong. So the, this suggests that um, tower is about enterprise, uh, an established business, a corporation, something with a ladder structure. You've got your boss, you've got your employees. This looks to me like it could be something like a publisher. And this is a publisher with a long-standing reputation. This is somebody that people know about. It's been there a long time. It's rooted. The tree is kind of hangs around a long time and it's healthy. However, this three card spread ends in the cross, which is the burden. Now, this could mean two things. This is an esoteric 
something that could be a, like a metaphysical type publisher like Llewellyn or Schiffer or something like that. Uh, but it could be because it's the burden is not being able to find it. How do you connect with it? So this is uh, kind of what we would say is the past. We use these cards to establish and ask the acquirent, is this what you've been having the problem? This is what's going on. They say yes, and you're good. If not, the cards aren't talking to you and you want to shuffle again. So let's see what we should do. Birds, dog, and mice. Birds are about talking, chatting, phone, and getting out there. It could be about networking with the right people. It's all about uh, birds are chatty, talky, gossipy, and this could mean something you do on the internet to get out there, but it could also mean just picking up the phone or um, making known your information. This right here is a dog, which means friends or loyalty, and it could mean speaking to friends for information, but it also could mean that you know a friend or somebody that's in the field who could give you advice or perhaps give you a connection. Dog and friend, so talking to friends seems to be what's going on here. So this person may already know somebody and may be nervous about maybe asking them. And this mouse could be that perhaps they're worried they may not be uh, a friend anymore or something happened to the friendship where they they broke away from the friendship this could be a friend so talk to a friend who you thought had kind of like backed away and there wasn't anybody but the recommendation is here is go ahead and do it um, talk to them because they may have some information that may get you there reach out to them it may not be uh, as bad as the mice as you think it is but perhaps you've just backed away so that could be your advice to the client another way you could read this is these two right here, if you like to read the two mirroring cards, you could say the advice is the talk hasn't been happening. The mice is taking away, and this is the voice, is you haven't been using your voice, you haven't been talking, and that kind of validates that too. Some people will take it even further. They'll take mirroring cards like dog and establishment, and this just validates what we just said, because here's the friend who's in publishing. Okay friend that works in publishing. You take the two outside ones, you got mice and tree. Long time, something taken away. It could mean that uh, you could take away this long wait by doing but it. What I tend to see is the long wait and it hanging around and just not doing much, uh, even though it's a good book, would be taken away and actually made shorter. So length would be taken away, speed would happen faster. Okay. This and this, dog, friend, in a metaphysical field, esoteric friend. Uh, the dog is a friend who's the burden. Oh, I don't know. I didn't know we were still friends, or I didn't know I was close enough, or I didn't. I don't know. She thinks that I don't only be calling her because um, uh, she may think I'm using her for this. Uh, but this suggests using her as a resource and getting some advice from her and seeing what she says. So that would be the advice after a nine card spread. Thanks for joining me today and have a great Lenormand week.